Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd have a um, quick look at this thing and what we've got here is a uh, it's a Bonner card um, and it's a hearing aid now this is a hearing aid that dates from the late 1940s or early 1950s and if you think what well, kind of like the size of a modern hearing aid is and then uh, compared with this thing I mean if you um, look at it in, compar in comparison with my hand it's kind of like hand sized and um, it's actually a valve, it's a valve operated um, hearing aid and uh, it would have been used in a couple of different ways this um, this configuration that I've got mine in uh, where basically this would be on um, a pendant around someone's neck uh, obviously with the earpiece um, in the ear or you could also use this where this was on the um, on a little belt and the microphone here is actually detachable and you would have had a wire that went between this and the base unit there and um, that could be connected on like your coat lapel or something or uh, on your clothing it has a little spring clip on the back and then like I said the hearing aid would have been a little bit more discreet but uh, I believe this one was uh, possibly used by a child and uh, it would probably have been more then like this would have been in like little uh, leather case with um, some straps on it and that would have gone round the um, round the neck of the user and basically we've got sadly it is not in brilliant condition I mean these things these are rare um, partly due to the fact that um, when these were basically becoming obsolete in uh, the early 1960s when transistorized um, hearing aids came out a lot of these were sold off on the surplus market and um, a publication called um, Practical Wireless um, produced some designs for actually converting these old um, battery valve hearing aids into a small um, like personal radio so to actually find one of these which is unmolested and hasn't been tried to be converted into a radio is really quite a uh, quite something, you, like I said, they're, um, they're something a bit different, uh, you don't see that many of these um, about, especially not ones that haven't been um, haven't been fiddled about with. So basically what we've got, we've got the main unit here, like I said the microphone, which we've got there, let's just zoom you out a bit so it's uh, a little bit, oops, wrong way, a little bit easier to um, show this, so we've got the microphone there, the main unit, obviously the headphone there. Um, this is an earpiece one. They also did um, produce these with a um, standard headphone, which went like sort of over the head with um, two headphones on it. So this is the um, this has got the earpiece, and then we've got on the main unit. We also have original cloth covered wiring. Sadly, it's not in brilliant condition. It is falling. Um, it is falling apart. But like, so this thing's about seventy years old now. Um, there we go. Let's get that. Um, let's get that disconnected like that. So basically, what we've got, we've got two more plugs here. Uh, that one's marked LT, and that one's marked HT. So that's for our two batteries, because this thing actually uh, would have run with two batteries. You have a low tension battery to run the valves filaments at I think 1.5 volts, and then you had another battery which uh, it was actually I think it was a dual voltage battery I think it gave out 90 volts and 45 volts or 65 volts and 45 volts something like that um, to run the high tension in the um, in the valves inside this I thought we'd have a, um, a bit of a look inside it and basically a little bit of a look over it so they're not something you see every day <coughs> in fact I think we'll have a look at the microphone first now it's going to be one of two types of microphone this, it's either going to be a, um, a carbon granule microphone or it's going to be um, like a ribbon type microphone. I've never had it open so I'm not actually sure which, if indeed it is good, ah there we go, it is going to open and let's see what it's in a horrible state in here, it's obviously been um, damp at some point but I think what we've got in there, yeah, now it, it unfortunately it's shot, it's never going to work again, but that's an old um, carbon granule microphone. 
I just quite a sensitive type of microphone and basically what you've got in there is you've got um, a load of carbon granules with some um, contacts behind them and then a um, diaphragm in front of that and obviously the um, voice hits that diaphragm and it causes the um, resistance in the carbon granules to change which obviously then gives you your voltage, your fluctuating voltage which is amplified so um, that's the type of microphone was actually um, actually employed in this thing. That's quite interesting. I was wondering whether it might be a um, like a ribbon type microphone, but that, no, that's definitely a um, a carbon granule microphone. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can actually hear the oops. It is it is dropping apart, but um, you can actually hear. I just lost one of the screws out of it there. No bugger. Oh, I'll to. Hang on. No, no. Yeah, I've dropped one of the screws out. I'll have to find that later. We'll put that back together for now. So we'll find that missing. Uh, or we'll find that missing screw. It's got one missing anyway. It had one missing when I uh, got it in the first place. Let's tighten that back up. And the bake light's not in brilliant condition, so them screws don't seem to screw in very well anymore. But yeah, uh, let's have a look in the main unit and see what actual um, type of valves this uses. Now, I'm, I think, um, actually from reading the um, Practical Wireless article on converting these to a radio, which I do have somewhere in my Practical Wireless collection, um, I believe it uses um, like super miniature wire-ended uh, valves in here, which were actually a, um, a product of um, the Second World War. They were... Um, a type of valve developed for use in uh, various things in the uh, Second World War. So we'll see if that is indeed the... Uh... I do have some um, older wire-ended valves kicking about somewhere. I think they're um, triodes, but I think the ones I've got are Russian. And I think they were from 1960s uh, guided missiles. As where well. these obviously, like I said, are I'm not sure what their original um, use would have been in the war, this type of um, valve, possibly field radios or something like that. But I think these type of, like I said, this type of valve is pretty much a direct um, evolution of them valves. There we go, we're in. It's a little on the rusty side in here, as we can see. Right, let's see if we can get in there a little bit further. I can see the tubes, sorry, the valves, um, I'm not, yeah, valves in the UK, tubes in America. Um, I can see them under there, and they do indeed appear to be the uh, the wire-ended variety. Let's see if we can get in here any further. I think we're going to have to see if we can take that volume control off before we can uh, perhaps get the actual guts out. And I don't know if that's going to undo. Unfortunately, this screw um, to take that volume control off seems to be pretty well uh, pretty well shot, and I don't want to do any damage to this thing. I've no intention of ever actually getting it working. I just thought it was a really interesting uh, little curio. But uh, I, I don't want to risk to get that plate off. I need, it looks like I need to actually um, disconnect the um, volume control there. And the grub screw for that volume control is rusted solid. I could possibly drill it out, but again, I don't really want to do that much damage to this thing. It is quite a, quite a rarity. But we can see, I don't know if you can make it out well enough, if you look down there, you can actually see they're a very thin, like, um, not much wider than a pencil, um, miniature wire ended. So they don't have a socket on the end and a plug, they just end in a wire and they're soldered directly into circuit. But we've got one, two, we've got three tubes, in, sorry, valves, we've got three valves in here. Um, it's a pity we can't get in it a bit further, actually, in a... No, I don't think there's... I tried unscrewing that screw there and it didn't seem to do anything. So I think we do need to get the volume control off, which is a shame to be able to, uh, to get into there, but... 
I don't really want to bend it and uh, I wonder if I just put a bit of tension on that whether it will unscrew. Ah, ah, there we go. We can, uh, we can see in there a bit more. And I still can't get any. Uh, hang on. Let's see if we can get in a bit further. So I really don't want to do any irreparable damage to this thing. We can at least get in a little bit to see um, to see what we've got in there. I'm seeing if we could see a um, a marking on the valves to actually see what they are. It just says XP1, and that's all I can make out on that first valve. I think they're probably just a triode, um, an indirectly heated triode. Looking at this, if we uh, we can see in there. You can see the three, uh, the three valves in there. One, two, three. I think they're probably all the same. I don't think you need anything particularly fancy in here, to be honest. Cause, I mean, all you're doing is providing some amplification. That's literally all this thing is. It's just a, it's just really a headphone amplifier, if nothing else. It's a little bit annoying. I can't get any further in there, though. Now perhaps in the um, future we'll have to have a look at seeing whether I can um, I can get that volume control out and then we can perhaps get in here a bit. Ah, hang on. There we are. I managed to sneak it out. And there is a damaged... Uh... Oh, it's not damaged, it's just a spacer. So we can move this a bit further out of the way. There's a wire there. There we are. We're in. There we go. So we can see in. We can see in there now. And this is incredibly, incredibly simple. So we've got some um, coupling capacitors there. Another coupling capacitor, which is one of the old Hunt's uh, mold seals down there. And there's the potentiometer for the uh, volume control. Another um, decoupling capacitor there, and there's a couple of resistors. And the resistors are, yes, yeah, like, where's that a resistor there? 500. Oh, that's 500 working. Uh, no, so they are all capacitors. So I can't actually see any resistors in there at all. It's all capacitor based. So we've got one, two, three, four, we've got five um, capacitors. Most of them will be uh, decoupling each valve from one from the other. So basically the audio. Um, the audio will probably go into the first valve, get am amplified. And you've got a capacitor stopping the um, DC from that valve getting onto the grid of the next valve. Again, same thing again. And then you've probably got the volume control um, controlling the gain on the second valve. Then you'll have one of the valves as um, an output to drive the um, headphone. Bearing in mind that these things, such tiny little valves like this, you know, we're talking a very, very small gain um, per actual valve. So, um, even though all we're doing is using it to pick up from that microphone and drive that little headphone, you've only got a very, really a very small gain from each um, valve. That's why you're going to need three of them and like three stages of um, amplification like that. But it's quite amazing what they actually um, what they actually did. What's even more amazing is that someone actually managed to um, find a way of actually installing a tuning capacitor, a ferret core, and um, all the associated circuitry into this even tiny little case to um, convert these things into a uh, little personal radio. But that's you know literally that's what people did with them when they were um, obsolete in the early sixties. Um, they converted them into, um, like I said, these little um, personal radios using the same three, um, same three valves. So they did be a little um, TRF set. They wouldn't have been very sensitive or anything. But uh, 
yeah. Interesting little bit of history. Let's see if we can um, possibly put it back together. I need to put that in. This is the only problem, really. Is trying to get when you take something um, apart like this to um, have, this especially when you're just having a, a nosy like me. It's trying to um, put it all back together again. I suppose one day I have to make some batteries up for it. Um, it might be uh, it might be something that I have a look at in the future and see if we can actually possibly get to um, get to power up. Obviously, we'd have to replace the microphone because that's definitely shot. But I think we could find an element that'd fit in there. There, that's back in there. Let's get this lined up again. Let's see if we can get the screw to screw back in. There we go. So let's snap that screws back in. That holds all that in place. Let's put that bit of cardboard back in there for safety. So put the back back on. something quite right there because that's not quite sitting down flat. Let's try that again. Yeah I've got them two bits stuck together now. My, uh, I don't think that screw went in right, quite in the right place, you know. Oh, there's something not. It's an absolute wonder the poor little sods that had to build these things. You know, they must have had very, very, they had to be very, very dexterous. So most assembly line workers, I think, were women actually. On. Um, Especially um, later on in the uh, 60s and 70s, but I think even on stuff like this, you would have needed very nimble little fingers to uh, to work on these things. I don't have very nimble little fingers, so it's obviously, obviously it's a little bit of a a faff. But there we go, back together. It just wasn't quite lined up. I'll screw the screws back in. Okay, it is missing a few screws, and it was when I got it. There we go. And put that one back in. So yeah, there we go. It's back together. Plug its little uh, microphone back in. Here, piece. It's nice the way it's designed, so you can't um, plug it anything in wrong. Really, everything uh, will only plug in one way. Same with the um, same with the batteries. You know, the design that they will only plug in um, in one direction. You can't get the um, HT ones mixed up because one pin's fatter than the other two. Um, yeah, it's even the same for the low tension. That one's slightly thinner than that one. So you, you literally you can't mess up uh, plugging it in. And controls the simpl simplicity itself. You know, you've got um, off, on, and you set your volume with that. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now. I just thought I'd do that, I'd do that little video, having a bit of a look at this. Because I dug this out while I was doing some of my, uh, some of my um, tidings up of the house. I've been doing all this because um, my girlfriend was meant to be coming over to uh, to spend Christmas with me, but unfortunately um, she hasn't had her visa through yet, so it looks like uh, she isn't going to be getting over for Christmas, which is a bit sad for me. Um, hopefully she's going to be able to get over in the new year, or at least for uh, February, because it's my birthday in February, so um, it would be nice to... Uh, 
to spend February together, we can't spend um, Christmas together. But um, yeah, that's other uh, that's other things. So it's not going to be a particularly nice Christmas this Christmas, really. Uh, bit of a pain that you know. That's um, that's what you get from um, from the UK. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that little um, video on that um, that little curio there. I hopefully should be able to get some more um, videos up. I have um, received that board for that um, Tatung Einstein, so I'm, we may even have a look at that Tatung Einstein over the Christmas um, Christmas period, seeing I'm not going to be doing much else now. So, um, hope you enjoyed that little video. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.